Howdy folks, my name is Jonicky, and this is Madame Bathsheba, and together we are Catamancy Tarot. So welcome back. I know I've been on a little bit of a uh, break. I haven't done a basket video in a while. I've been off working at a two month long dissertation writing institute kind of intensive experience. So I just wrapped up that and now we're now we're into summer. And so what I thought I would do today is, um, since I also happen to have a early cancer season birthday, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a birthday haul, some things that are new to me that I'm excited about, and then we're going to do a little bit of a summer vibe check. Um, and so as you will see, one of the, the decks that I got myself is the inspiration for the theme this month, which is kind of like uh, neo-psychedelic, neo-psych, uh, modern psych, um, and so those are kind of, those are kind of the vibes that I'm feeling, and so I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you what's new, I'll show you some of the kind of the summary sort of psychedelic-ish, you know, decks I've been working with, and then at the end I'll do a little uh, collective reading for everyone. So without further ado, let me show you what's in my basket this month. All right, folks, I thought we would start off by doing, uh, going over the haul stuff first. So you can see, see what's new, and then we'll move on to the, to the kind of the more vibey stuff after that. But first, what do you think of my new quilt? I splurged and got myself a new quilt for my birthday, and here it is. I think it's lovely. Um, so, the first deck I'm going to show you is my new favorite deck, I think. Um, I've been really loving using this, and it's a deck that um, I received from my good friend Meg at Rose Honey Ritual. She watched my... Um, I recently had a... Uh, a video about all of my out of print decks and in it I talked about what was still on my wish list and she, it turns out she had uh, one of the things on my wish list and uh, she gave it to me and that's the Solara Occulto Tarot. Now this is the first edition. I think the Kickstarter for the third edition of this just went out but I didn't want to back it. Um, because I love the borders on this first edition. I love the gold chunky borders. I think a lot of people hated them, but it's the thing that I maybe, um, I don't know. I'm really attracted to the, to the chunky gold borders. And so I think the new edition is borderless and then just has, uh, like a title across the bottom and then it's all gilded and the backs are scaly and gold and gilded and it's all a bit much for me and I just wanted the simple old school uh first edition and I can't believe I got it it was one of those decks that I thought I would just never find because I um I think the second edition has like had had like peach borders and they didn't do it for me and so I'm really glad I have this it feels, um, I like the limited color palette. I like all of the critters in this deck. Um, this deck has been like a really good reader for me. Like it reads really well. Um, it is, it is like very much just a little RWS guy. Um, but I've been, uh, this has been the main deck I've been working with recently. Um, and I've been really, really digging it. And, uh, that's the, that's the card on the cover. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know if I have too much to kind of say other than that I really like this world and the critters. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't have a lot of like illustrated decks, but I really like this illustration style. And so I decided that this deck needed a friend and the Mercury Salt and Sulfur Oracle is also out of print. And she's doing a weird thing where she's not reprinting the whole thing. She's just reprinting like 20 cards of it that will go in the new edition. Um, and so I did some... Uh, uh, I did some... I did some... Uh, 
you know, some snooping about, some scoping out. And I came across this French oracle deck. This is, uh, I think it's in the English translation of it is the Marvelous Medieval Oracle. And that's what I will call it because I cannot pronounce the French. And it's made by the same artist who made the Gulliver Tarot, which is also now on my witch list. It's a little Marseille deck, a um, little spooky Marseille deck. And it turns out that these decks are now BFFs. They're best friends. And so it, this this guy's in French. Um, these are the backs. The backs even go really well together, I think. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this deck is that when I got it, it's the kind of, it's mass market, but it's the kind where the gildings, everything sticks together. And so when you kind of like pry them apart, sometimes, uh, you know, you damage the cards and just trying to get them apart, no matter how carefully you try to pry. So that was a little, uh, little touch and go, but we got it. Everybody's okay. Um, let's see. Let's just take a look here. Uh, and the borders are a slightly different, slightly different color. Um, we'll just do zoom in a little bit more here. I think they go super well together. And the French titles are all kind of readable enough for me that it's kind of usable. And together they feel a little bit like... Um, I don't know, maybe maybe more like fall cozy decks rather than like summer summer solstice vibes. But I've been yeah, I've been really feeling the both of these. The this medieval French oracle, um, I think it has a similar kind of vibe to all of the like season of the witch oracles, which I don't have. But I think I like this. I like this more. Uh, this is a spooky combo. Message and death. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, this is this is this is the combo I've been playing with, having a lot of fun with. They both feel like um, charmingly fantasy uh, a little bit, which I really like. It's a little bit a little bit eccentric. Um <laughs> so this has been this has been my main combo and I really love them. I think it's I think it's uh like an actually a perfect combo. Um with that they both have the same restricted color palette. What do you guys think? Do you guys what else do you pair if you have the Solara Colta? What else do you what else do you pair it with? I was also thinking um I brought this out uh just to see but this is the Spirit Speak Tarot, and I've thought about this, but I haven't tried it out yet. If this would be... It's another kind of doodle deck, and I wonder if it would also be, you know, at home in this little family. Let's see here. Well, we gotta keep adjusting here, sorry. Let's see if we can get everybody in frame. Yeah, I think that would be... I think all three of them are kind of in the same, the same world a little bit with a restricted color palette and like a little bit of a doodly style. I think that's fun. I think they're fun together. It's maybe not the best kind of spatial arrangement for these guys, but I think it can work. Uh, anyways. So those are those are the guys I've been kind of uh, using the most, um, getting some pretty fun readings out of. Um, so excited and grateful to have um, have the stack. So that's very very exciting. Um, now the next deck um, was another one that Meg sent me that was on my wish list and it's one of the ones that um <coughs> oh excuse me had to sneeze it's one that's been on my radar for ages and ages it's beloved by the tarot world it seems everyone seems to love it and it's a curious deck 
it's the Yonasa Yaus Tarot, and this is the uh, the last edition, aka the third edition. And I, it's a deck that I've always been like rather intrigued by, but never actually kind of um, pulled the trigger on. Um, and it is it is quite beautiful. Um, and I'm trying to figure out whether or not its um, beauty is its uh, main main characteristic. Um, I know I know this is a deck that everybody loves, and it every you know, I feel like it's on. I see it. I've seen it for years and years, and I've been so curious about it. Um, and I it turns out I kind of have a a mixed. A mixed feeling about it. So if this is one of your favorite decks, <laughs> um, then uh, please excuse my um, my own opinions, but I find it to be particularly hard to read. Um, and it's because it's, I think, um, so it's, it's uh, ostensibly uh, you know, a deck within the Marseille tradition, even though it's a non-traditional Marseille deck. I read with Marseille, um, and this doesn't read like a Marseille deck to me, because it's actually semi-scenic. Um, and I think semi-scenic decks are the hardest type of deck to read with. And I've, I've pulled out, separated out some cards to show you what I mean. Um, and so, uh, with semi-scenic, you get scenes, um, and it's not completely pippish. Um, you're just dealing with some, uh, you know, you're dealing with some scenes. But there's some repetition in this deck, as you can see here. Like all these, there's six <laughs> images of flowers in a cup. Um, and some of them are the suit of cups. And some of them are the suit of coins. And so, the, which is like... You know, we do get different kinds of flowers, but um, as a reader, I have a hard time. I So I really enjoy, um, my main reading style is like, I like to look at the image. I'm not a reader who, unless it's like something extremely pippish, who will just be able to kind of like, um, you know, if it's the, the three of coins, you know, there's a particular... Um, you know, three is about growth and coins is about, you know, uh, you know, uh, material resources. So you're, you know, so you have that way of reading where it's just kind of like the, you could basically read, you know, with playing cards or without any images input. And it's just kind of like, a you know, a table of what's the suit, what's the number, that's the meaning. Um, so that's not the main way I read, although that does kind of inform my readings. Even when I'm reading Marseille decks, I still like to kind of look at the image and have the image help inform the meaning. But when you have, uh, like a set of cards where, I don't know, the images, I have a hard time distinguishing how to read this differently than this or this. And so for me, it's a little bit challenging. Let's look at another example. Um, uh, yeah, the next set of images are all kind of um, women who are thoughtfully reclined in a bed of flowers. <laughs> Um, and so there's, there's a bunch of them where they're kind of just, uh, you know, laying down in the woods, um, or I guess this top row is mostly kind of, yeah, these are women who are kind of like hanging out in the flowers, um, <laughs> for a long time, even with this one, but it's like bodies lying down with flowers being contemplative. So for me, I would, I have a hard time distinguishing between like, what's the difference in meaning between these, even though this is, this is a major arcana, like the images are all kind of, um, like it's hard for me to decide how these mean different things. 
I don't know. I don't know. Um, so that's another category. And then you just have a bunch of um, very close-ups of, you know, women. <laughs> close-ups of women with some flowers. And again, like, I have a hard time... I have a hard time distinguishing meaning. So I guess I'm curious if this is a deck that you read with often. How do you read with it? Um, it seems like a challenging reader, aside from the fact that it is, it seems to be like uh, a favorite of lots of folks. Um, but yeah, and it's one of those things where like, um, I'm, I also sometimes struggle with sometimes you, sometimes you do get swords and sometimes the swords are just flowers or sometimes you get cups but sometimes instead of cups you have flowers so it seems like it's not it's not a straight up pip deck it's this kind of like semi-scenic style uh, and another semi-scenic deck is um the marigold tarot and that's another deck that i i i struggle to read with for a similar reason and i think it's because it's um like i feel like the semi-scenic is the hardest to read with because I really want to kind of interpret the image but when you have um there's just like really subtle differences between these um like it's hard for me to decide what what these <laughs> you know in uh yeah yeah I guess um not to kind of really belabor the point but I was I was just kind of curious um, and then the other interesting thing about this deck is all of the men in this deck seem to be evil, uh, which is really quite curious. Like, I'm, I'm intrigued by this, um, and it seems like these are all kind of evil, <laughs> evil kings, or um, we've also got the Emperor and the Hierophant here. Uh, but so this deck, to me, the vibe I've been getting you know, with all of these, you know, with all of these kind of, um, you have, it, it feels to me, <laughs> it feels like a, one of those kind of like supernatural romance series that get super popular. I'm thinking of something like, uh, Twilight or even like something like the Sarah J Moss books where you have, you know, you have your female protagonists but they all, to me, I don't know, they feel a little bit uh, uh, cookie cutter or just like, um, you know, sometimes with those kinds of books, you have a character who's just a little bit empty so you can put yourself, you know, you can imagine yourself into this fantasy. And then all of the relationships, while the books might be steamy, are actually like really quite toxic. <laughs> And you have all of these evil men. So yeah, I guess I'm I'm really intrigued by this world. I'm not quite sure about it yet. Uh, there seems to be some some of the my favorite cards are when you get you know the sort of women with the swords or in armor. Um, you know I'm I'm curious about this, and it feels like a weird kind of modern modern medieval mashup fantasy going on. Um, yeah, so, uh, and I know, uh, I actually, I don't have the guidebook for this since I was gifted it sort of second or even third hand. Um, so I think there's a PDF guidebook, but I haven't been able to find it on her website. Um, and I know that she kind of, um, uh, she... Uh, designed this with Jodorowsky's book in mind, and I'm not a big Jodo fan, so instead I've started to use this book to read with this deck. Um, and this also feels like very fairy tale y. It's for Marseille and for playing cards, and one thing that makes it work really well is like um, Horn's interpretation of the kings are often as like um, like powerful or like morally gray kind of figures. And so that, or like, you know, the King of Swords, um, his interpretation is like the King of Swords is kind of evil, <laughs> uh, which like this guy is totally evil, like for sure. 
Um, so yeah, I've been playing around with that. I'm not sure about it. I really want to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Um, cause I feel like I've seen this deck everywhere, but, um, I don't know. I want to know how people actually read with it. Um, yeah, cause that's something I'm, I'm struggling with. I also want to know what you, what do you guys pair with this deck? I've been thinking about using, um, this little guy, which is the, uh, Terra Incognita Oracle, um, which is, we just have these kind of like black and white images, let's see here, of flora and fauna. So that kind of works. Um, but yeah, curious, curious about what your thoughts are. I, yeah, I like this third edition. It's like a good, I really like the size. I think with the newest edition, there's ones that have this like deep maroon backs, which is my favorite color. But, um, I don't know, this is sort of one of those decks that there are just a billion editions on. Okay, we'll kind of uh, move on and, and set, set that aside. Uh, quickly, another deck that I got for... Um, this was a Kickstarter, but it came just in time for my birthday. So this is the true Oracle of Nostradamus. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a quirky little guy. Um, so let's take a look at some of them. I haven't really used it yet, but I've set it up to kind of do a, a walkthrough and comparison with the Rider Waite Smith. Um, but there, it's a deck. It's a, a reprint of a deck from kind of I think um, the nineteen. Uh, so it's got it's inspired by the prophecies of Notre Dame. So in the guidebook, there's little prophecies from. Uh, the 1500s, but the artwork itself and the deck was originally created in like, I don't know, I think the 19, 1911. Um, so it was inspired by the Rider Waite Smith and Nostradamus. And they have these fun, um, kind of upright and reversed meanings. This seems like a really kind of spooky, um, uh, a spooky fortune tellery. Um, like, I think this will be a really fun deck to use around Halloween. Um, and it, it's, uh, um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to do a full walkthrough of it explaining kind of the structure of the deck, but it is inspired by the tarot. So this is, you know, at 20, we have judgment, um, with upright and kind of reverse meanings. So it's a cute, it's a cute little guy. Um, so I'll explore that one further with you guys um later but now let's get into the oh wait and i also i also bought this <laughs> uh i'm about to start teaching a class this summer um and it's anthropology of the supernatural and i wanted a deck to use with my students that i didn't mind kind of getting sort of banged up so i wanted to get a deck especially for the intention of like using in class um, and I have the mini version of this, and I have the yellow box, but I didn't have, I think the Centennial is one of, I think it's my, I like it more than the yellow box, and I've wanted this for some time, just, you know, gotta catch them all, kind of, kind of idea, but I was really disappointed by the new U.S. Games cardstock. Um, I kind of dig that these don't have the copyright. And I love the colors on them, but the new U.S. game card stock uh, kind of sucks. And I've heard that, but I don't know how to get a version of this deck with the older card stock. Like, I don't know what year they made the switch over. Um, I don't know what to, like, Google to try and find. So, but for now, this is just going to be, you know... This is going to be the deck that I use in class. Maybe have some students pull some cards to do a, like a little vibe check or check-in daily. So that's that's what that's for. Okay, now this is, now we're getting to the main deck, which inspired today's theme, <laughs> which we haven't really gotten into yet, but we're getting into now. And the theme is kind of neo-psychedelic. Um, or modern psychedelic, and it's inspired by the Mountain Dream Tarot. Now, this has been on my deck, on my, sorry, on my radar, 
um, since I, you know, started collecting, which was back in like 2018. Um, and it's always been on my wish list and I finally got it. Um, I've been listening. I think the purchase itself was inspired by some of the tunes I've been listening to. Um, I found, uh, it's new to me, but you know, from the seventies, um, an album called Parallelograms by, uh, Linda Purchase. I think that's her name which I really love. And I think that's one of my favorite albums I've been listening to all year. Um, and so, yeah, a little bit of kind of psychedelic folk. I love the people. I love the like muted sort of sepia and colored plates. I love the t style of photography. I'm curious about who all of these people are. Like this, this is another deck like, um, Solara Occulta that I just reads really well for me straight out of the box. Um, and I've been really digging it and I feel like, I feel like, um, some of the like neo-psychedelic stuff is like coming back in, right? I feel like it's making, uh, you know, we have a resurgence of interest in it with in terms of kind of like music and fashion and um <laughs> fonts <laughs> um i think it's i think it's a thing and so yeah i've been really uh enjoying this world and it, it feels kind of it feels a little bit soft a little bit nostalgic um but really quite fun um i love this page of wands I think he's so cool. I want to, I want to know this person. I, let's see. I want to get a good, good mixture of color tones here. Cause I want to know, do you guys have this deck? What do you pair it with? Um, have you guys seen, uh, Krista over at Crochet Witch Tarot's, uh, speed dating with the tarot videos? I think those are great and lovely. And, we're going to do a little bit of that now where I'm just trying to kind of see what goes with this. I think, um, I think it goes again with my little black and white plant Oracle. I think that looks nice together. I think they could be friends. Um, one thing I will say about this deck is I feel like there's a lot of, um, repetition in the the keywords um where i feel like there's it doesn't have like a i feel like the range of the type of words is limited but i still i still enjoy it and i think it's a fun little one that could go with this and then now we get sort of more into the more um neo psychedelic <laughs> decks um and some of them you'll kind of recognize i feel like one of the main uh, like neo psych <laughs> deck creators is Serpent Fire. Uh, any of the Serpent Fire decks, um, uh, or the She Wolf. I don't have those decks, but those would totally be the vibe. I have this little oracle, which is your wise animal body. Um, and I think weirdly, I think it could, I think it could go. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Is it too, is it too weird to pair kind of I don't know. I think it works. <laughs> what do you think? So I've been playing around with this. This is definitely kind of a neo psych deck. Oh yeah, I think it works. I think I'm. I think I'm into it. Just with the uh, the font, I feel like I could. I feel like I could get into it. What do you think? Yeah. So, um, this is, yeah, this is an oracle that I've been sort of reaching for. Um, I feel like it matches the vibe. Um, and then in terms of other kind of neo-psychedelic stuff, or uh, in terms of oracles, I feel like Runners of the Sun, maybe. It's not, um, fully, it is, uh, you know, it uses photographs, um, but from a different time period. So I'm not sure if this is a... A match. <laughs> Unsure 
if this actually goes. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, there's some that feels a little nostalgic, but I think it's a little bit too colorful. Um, or too, too busy. I'm unsure of it. But I do think that this, this oracle is definitely, has, has some neo psych vibes especially with that font and the lime green and and you know the backs and everything i'm not sure if it's a good friend for the mountain dream but that's okay i'm still going to use it and then uh my staple my favorite road to nowhere um i think it might i think it might be a friend i think it might work with this one what do you think Yeah, I, I feel like this goes with most things. Or maybe I just love it so much that I don't mind it with everything. Um, yeah, I, I actually really dig this combo. Um, I think it can work. So that's another, another kind of summer, summer, summer combo. Feeling a little bit soft, uh, feeling a little bit dreamy. 70s kind of psychedelic folk music. <laughs> um, and then Pixie is another, another one that I would call like, um, I think it fits in the kind of more the modern psych approach, especially like, look at these fonts. And sometimes it's weird to pair circular decks with uh, regular decks, but I think it, I think it works. I think it works. I actually really dig them together. Uh, I actually really like that. What do you guys think? Um, yeah, there's something about the. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> it's a little bit silly, uh, but um, yeah. So playing, playing around with, <clears throat> playing around with these guys. I think it works. I don't know. I think it's kind of very playful. Um, and I, I like, I like the, uh, kind of the OG psychedelic and then the, the later, the later stuff. Um, uh, is that the last Oracle I was going to show you? Yeah. Um, and then the other kind of sort of seventies, seventies, eighties decks I've been, uh, playing with. This one is the Flying Hearts Tarot which is a deck, I made a whole um, walkthrough of this video, if you're curious about it. Um, it's a deck from um, the 80s in Germany, um, and it is definitely, it feels like a mashup of the Tantric Dakini Oracle and Morgan's Tarot in its kind of like absurdity. Um, so this is another kind of uh, like OG kind of... <laughs> a um, little bit psychedelic um, deck and it's a really fun one it's a really unusual one and uh, I went ahead and I translated all of the titles each of the cards have a title and so I use this more as an oracle deck because it kind of uh, goes off the rails in terms of tarot structure um, and I think it's more fun as an oracle deck, so that's how I'm using it. Um, and I think it's, I think it's pretty funky. Um, uh, <laughs> you, yeah. Some of them are landscape, and some of them are upright in orientation. Um, the guidebook, from what I can make of it, is like super duper funky. Um, and so that's another one of my kind of OG <laughs> uh, psychedelic decks. Let's see. 
Let's see if we let's see if we think it goes with Mountain Dream because I'm still uh, just obsessed with this pairing. I think it could work. I'm not sure if it does work. Maybe it could. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's uh, I think it's tricky because the borders are so cream. Um. But maybe. Anyways, in any case, uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of one of the ones I've been playing around with. Um, and then uh, I, f I found this guy. This is printed uh, 1974 Tarot Classic by Stuart Kaplan. And I found this on eBay for nine dollars and I could not resist. So this is a, a little summer, summery Marseille deck. I think it's um, inspired by the Gassman Tarot, which is like a Swiss um, illustrated deck from the, I think, 17th century, um, but reprinted with these really funky colors. I love this death card. Um, and so this is my, this is my uh, little, little psychedelic, um, 70s Marseille vibe deck that, uh, these cups are so funky. They're so silly. I was a good score. I was very happy to, to kind of nab this one. So that's, that's one of the ones that, um, I think, I think this would actually, let's see, I think this would be fun with, uh, we're just kind of, we're just doing a mashup now. We're just mashing it up. These are the uh, those are all the oracles I showed you, but I think it would even work with this one. Let's see. What do you think? Is it too weird? It might be too weird. Um, I think Meg had a fun video on pairing Marseille decks. Um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, stuff like, stuff like that. Stuff like that. Uh, and then, um, another deck that's kind of OG psychedelic is the Zagurner Tarot, and this one is from 1982, so this is another vintage deck, and it's a very, very colorful, let's get, let's get those title cards out of here. It's a, it's a very colorful little guy um, that I always really, it's a, it's my favorite pip deck. Um, let's zoom in a little bit here. It's my favorite pip deck and it's just so colorful and like it's very folksy to me. Um, so this is another deck that I feel like fits, fits the vibe. I love the colors. I love those like fuchsias and teals and greens going on. I love that there's always this kind of like proscenium arc over them. Yes. Um, yeah, very fun. So that's been, that's another kind of old school uh, kind of, um, decks I've been using. And then the last deck that I feel like is definitely, definitely in this kind of neo-psych vein is uh, the tarot by Caitlin Madison. Now, Caitlin Madison is someone who, uh, like, I found out about this deck through Chelsea Wolfe's Instagram, <laughs> uh, who's a, um, who's a musician but um, Caitlin Madison is someone who des designs like those um, like psychedelic style music posters. Um, if you check out her Instagram and um, this tarot deck is also kind of very much, um, very much like modern psychedelic um, stuff. Uh, I love this emperor. Um, yeah, and it's, this is a deck that it's, it's a Rider Waite Smith clone. It's nothing super duper special in terms of like, it, it reads, 
Um, like it reads well enough, but it's not, uh, I don't know. Um, aesthetically it's really beautiful, but this is a really pricey deck and, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's, uh, worth, like, I don't think you, um, it has like so much extra mileage, but it's, I'm like happy it's in my collection. I do really like using it. Um, and it fits my it fits my summer vibe, so I'm I'm happy to have it here. Um, I just wish that it was you know a little bit more reasonably priced and a little bit more accessible for folks. Um, but it is it is very cute, and I think it goes. It's another one that would go really well with um, if we take a look at our wise animal body oracle i think i think these all would uh hang out really well together i think so i think it's a it's it's fun to get like a group of decks that you can kind of like reach for any of them sort of interchangeably and then they all kind of work together so that's what i was trying to do with like i have a bunch of those kind of um, oracles and they all kind of have this similar I don't know it's fun to kind of like uh, you know put all of those in a basket and then reach for a couple of them and they all kind of they all kind of work together and they all sort of play well together so that's the idea behind the basket reading and those are those are the decks that I wanted to show you that's what I've been up to that's what I've been enjoying using um, and uh, that's the what 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 kind of vibes have you been feeling like this summer? Um, yeah, let me let me know. So now we're gonna switch things up and we're gonna do a little a little collective reading. All right, so we're gonna do a little collective summer reading for us all. And so this is gonna be a little bit of a little bit of a patchwork. So I figure I'll um, I'll use a couple different decks. And we're going to start off by pulling, I think, just one of these Flying Hearts Oracle cards. Because they're big and there's a lot going on. And there's some folks uh, in my last video on it who was curious to see how it reads. So we'll pull a card uh, and see where it takes us. I think for this one we're going to kind of pull a, a little bit of a overall overall summer theme for us. What's something that's coming up for this summer that's kind of ready ready to be explored and then we'll go ahead and we'll use uh we'll use the mountain dream tarot also here and we'll pull a couple cards just to kind of see where we're at at the beginning of the summer and kind of where where this little uh Flying Hearts journey is going to take us. This shuffles really nicely. It's a very smooth shuffler. I'm thinking about edging it. What do you guys think? Have you guys edged this one? In a, in a nice little midnight blue, perhaps? Alright. So here we're going to go ahead and pull couple cards for where we're where we're at and where we're headed and then lastly just for a pop of fun we're going to use this little round boy uh, to have a few little little oracle cards for us and we're going to pull three of these as like a little little bit of a bridge to think about how we get from where we're at to where we're going. So I feel like the idea of going on a little summer journey through some uh, portals of perception here that feels like within the, uh, <laughs> within the overall theme for ourselves. There we go. So go ahead and cut that. And I really like uh, sometimes just like making up things as I go along and this feels like a a fun arrangement <laughs> uh, 
uh, or sometimes doing um, a little bit of a like a tapestry reading or you know patchwork reading where you're just pulling a couple cards from a couple different places so let's take a look at our central card here what is kind of a theme that's coming up for our summer Ooh, so we have this card which is, let me break out my translations. So this is our master, um, and this is master number five, which is um, uh, our, um, the way this deck does court cards is it just has 16 master cards. So this is master number five, which is the source of happy feasts. Uh, I love that for us this summer. Um, so we've got a woman who's got some music and flowers and some uh, berries here um, in this little in this little doorway through which there's also a Buddha and then there's a gem and a crane flying in the air. So uh, uh, the source of happy feasts. So maybe this is a time where you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, opening up a portal of, of happy feasts, like be ready to kind of open up this little, uh, a little door somewhere we'll open this summer and we can hop on in and to, and, uh, I don't know, it feels like, you know, um, after the past couple of years we've had, this summer feels like the first like legit real summer um, we've had in a while. So maybe that's something what's going on. Let's take a look at where we're at now. Ooh, so we've got the uh, um, Ace of Coins and we've got the Nine of Cups. Uh, and so this feels like, um, you know, maybe there's a project that we're starting this summer. We've got some goals, um, something that we want to grow, something that we want to kind of plant, um, whatever that might be for you. And then we've also got the nine. So we're kind of like wishing and hoping for our seed to grow. We're having a good time, you know, drinking, drinking on top of some uh, rock sacks or sandbags, feed bags here out on the farm. Um, so it, it feels like, you know, we're planting and we're having a good time planting. Maybe it's less important what actually grows and it's more important that we're kind of like planting this and then we're, we're doing some feasting the summer of many feasts. Let's see where we're headed, where it's going. Ooh, we've got Queen of Cups and the Chariot. This feels like big Cancer season vibes. Am I right? Um, we've got Cancer, which is our, 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 we've got the Chariot, which is the um, card of Cancer. And then we've also got our Queen of Cups, who is uh, the wateriest <laughs> of the queens. She's double water, right? Um, and so this feels like a bit of an emotional journey, <laughs> right? Where um, it, it feels like big cardinal water energy, right? Um, so we're, uh, I guess where we're headed is this place of, of like emotional fulfillment, hopefully, right? With our, with our summer of happy feasts. And then let's just take a look at what these little cute guys are. Ooh, we've got Escape, we've got Electric, and we've also got Rest. Um, so, <laughs> uh, let's see here. So we've got, um, <laughs> this feels like, you know, zomb you know, a little bit of a zombie card. I don't know why this card gives me zombie vibes, but maybe there's, you know, something we can, we've got our little secret portal here into the, our, our realm of happy feasts. So maybe it's important for us to be able to have a little escape hatch this summer. So think about, um, you know, whatever that is for yourself, whether it's, you know, little things like your favorite show or book, or just these little bubbles of, um, you know, things we can escape into that make us um, feel happy. And then we've also got electric here. And so electric with rest makes me think of just like uh, needing to recharge or 
um, this little electric dolphin guy kind of coming out of our glowing gem here with this iris. So maybe there's, you know, some kind of, um, you know, a lightning rod or antenna. We can have our feelers out, out to the world ready to kind of like absorb, <laughs> you know, things that things, you know, our little happy feasts gives us energy. It gives us, um, you know, uh, being in spaces where you feel that electricity, you feel electric, you feel with your, with your, your, with your buddies, with your Buddha, with your crane, with your violin, you know, things that bring you those sparks, right? Then we've also got rest. And so I think this is, you know, um, although with the queen and the chariot, we have this kind of like big uh, emotional push. I think it's also, and we've got this little heart-shaped portal here, right? So maybe it's important, um, you know, uh, rest to give the time for the, the heart to recover um, some of those electric juices that it needs, right? So that's my uh, quirky, weird little uh, summer collective reading for you all. I hope it made any sense. Um, I think it's a really funky one, but these are the, <laughs> these are the vibes I've been feeling. Uh, how about you? I hope you all have been well and thanks for joining to me, joining me today. I will, uh, see you guys next time. Bye for now.